Ruth Wilson was a 16-year-old attendee of Ashcombe School in Betchworth, Surrey, when she disappeared. She supposedly vanished off the face of the earth on Monday the 27th of November in 1995 from Box Hill in Surrey, England. Why did Ruth suddenly disappear? Did she remove herself by choice, or was there some kind of foul play involved? What exactly led up to the last day she was ever seen? Let's look into the mysterious disappearance of Ruth Wilson. Welcome back to the channel, you classy creeps. I will be revealing a potential strong catalyst for Ruth's disappearance towards the end of this video, so hold tight for that. Just as a side note, I'll be posting regular videos on true crime, real life mysteries, and just general weird stuff. So if that does sound like your kind of thing, subscribe to the channel and become a classy creep today. Ruth Wilson's last known home of Betchworth is a village in the Mul Valley district of Surrey with a heritage that dates back to the 11th century. Betchworth is a conservation area with many listed buildings and landmarks. With a current population of just over a thousand people, Betchworth has a real close-knit community feel to it. Ruth and her younger sister Jenny were the daughters of Ian and Nesta Wilson. Ruth's biological mother Nesta passed away when she was just three years old. Ruth's father Ian Wilson remarried in 1983 in Surrey to Karen Bowerman. Ruth, her sister Jenny, father Ian and stepmother Karen lived in a cottage in Betchworth, Surrey. At the time of of Ruth's disappearance. Ruth Wilson was a teenager in the 1990s. There was no social media, popular culture was at its peak at this time. Anyone who has lived in both that decade and current times will tell you that this decade was something very special indeed, especially for a music lover like Ruth Wilson. From what I can tell, Ruth enjoyed many of the typical pastimes for teenagers in that era, namely the outdoors, music and reading. She also had a couple of part-time jobs. She was a local babysitter and she worked part-time in a music shop. Music seemed to be important in Ruth's life because by all accounts, she was also a member of a choir and played some musical instruments. Ruth was described by her peers as being intelligent, but also with a slightly quirky off-the-wall character. This quirky personality can be depicted in some of the last known photos of Ruth as a teenager. However, on the flip side, it would seem that Ruth was somewhat of a troubled teenager. Ruth would often have sleepovers over at her friends' houses, and while this is pretty normal for most teenagers, when she was there, she would often talk about staying with them and not coming home again. Catherine Mayer, Ruth's friend, moved to Yorkshire and Ruth allegedly asked Catherine multiple times if she could just come with her. This was merely weeks before Ruth's disappearance. On the morning of Monday the 27th of November 1995, Ruth and her family were getting ready for the day ahead. Ruth's father Ian had a stressful and important day in store, leaving the house rather abruptly. Ruth's stepmother Karen also left for work, leaving Ruth and her sister Jenny at the house getting ready to catch the bus to school. But just as Ruth and Jenny were about to catch the bus to school, Ruth told Jenny that she would not catch the bus with her after all. At the time, Ruth was in the sixth form at the school and did not need to attend the school uh, every day all day. Thinking nothing of this, Jenny caught the bus to school on her own. Later that morning, Will Kennedy, Ruth's ex-boyfriend, arrived at the Wilson house in his car, offering Ruth a lift to school. Ruth and Will, whilst not an item anymore, were still good friends and Will would often offer Ruth lifts in his car. But on this occasion, Ruth declined and promised to meet up with Will later on that day. Sometime before midday, Ruth took a taxi cab to the market town of Dorking, about five miles west from her home. Whilst in Dorking at approximately midday, Ruth ordered flowers for her step mother from Thistle's Florists at 257 Dorking High Street. Ruth specifically instructed the florist to deliver the flowers two days later on Wednesday the 29th of November and not a day before. Ruth spent the next few hours in Dorking Library until around 4pm when again she took a taxi to her next destination. She hopped into a taxi at Dorking Railway Station and asked the driver to take her to Box Hill, a well-known and popular picturesque area of Surrey. The taxi driver later commented that Ruth was acting in an unusual manner during the ride and even when dropped off he noticed that she was still acting strangely. In particular, the taxi driver later told police that when he pulled away, he saw in his mirrors that she watched and waited for him to leave as if to hide where she was going to go next. Nevertheless, this taxi driver was the last known person to see Ruth. At around the time of 4.30 on the 27th of November, 1995. The afternoon turned into late evening and Ruth's family were becoming increasingly concerned, especially when they learned that she had not attended school or spent any time with any of her friends that day. Based on the information provided by the taxi driver who dropped Ruth off at Box Hill, police conducted a nighttime search but not even sniffer dogs or a helicopter with thermal imaging could track Ruth down. There's a few mentions online about written notes found on Box Hill supposedly written by Ruth, but as far as I can tell none of these notes have been made public so it's hard to comment on these. Also in the same area were littered packets of Paris acetamol and alcohol bottles, but realistically this could just be litter that could have been left by anyone. These discoveries don't really provide any concrete answers to what happened to Ruth or where she went. Just as Ruth instructed, the flowers she ordered arrived two days later, successfully delivered to her stepmother Karen. There was no note included and Ruth had still not returned home. Ruth Wilson was always told that her biological mother died from falling down the stairs. However, shortly before Ruth's disappearance, she learned that her mother passed away from taking her own life. It is thought by some that this revelation 
may have been one of the catalysts of Ruth's disappearance, that somehow this was just the last resort and she decided to start a new life for herself elsewhere. Ruth's friend, Catherine Mayer, went on record stating that knowing Ruth's personality, the act of sending these flowers was Ruth's way of somehow having the last laugh. When I read about her disappearance and um, that she'd been to the florist and ordered these flowers, I just know that is Ruth. Almost like a dark, practical joke that yeah. she was playing yeah, on her stepmother. Was, yeah two fingers up kind of thing. Further concerning details about Ruth's life emerged, including the fact that she was concerned about her performance at school, and it was even later discovered that she was hiding school reports from her father and stepmother. Days turned into weeks, and despite further organised searches led by police, friends, family and volunteers of Box Hill and its surrounding area, Ruth was just nowhere to be found. Police even went to the trouble of physically searching the new home of Ruth's friend Catherine nearly 200 miles in Sheffield. There was absolutely no evidence that Ruth took her own life, nor was there any concrete proof as to where she went next. Next, or who with? Ruth Wilson had quite simply vanished. Ian and Karen Wilson made several appeals, they made several press releases, appeals to the media, and even appeared on ITV's This Morning on the 8th of December, appealing for Ruth's return. Ian was stating that he was convinced that his daughter was still alive, but for some reason just didn't want to return home. For example, in this article from The Times on the 29th of December 1995, the headline reads, Since you've been gone, this is a house without music. There were several reported sightings of Ruth Wilson after her disappearance, including on the first anniversary of her going missing, a newsagent in Dorking, two miles away from Box Hill, had a conversation with a young girl that he was convinced was Ruth Wilson. The shopkeeper submitted the CCTV footage to the police, and the police showed it to Ian and Karen Wilson. Later, in an article by The Times on the 2nd of January 1997, Ian and Karen confirmed that they believe the girl in the video was Ruth Wilson. I see a lot of comments online regarding Ian Wilson, Ruth's father, stating that he rarely, if ever, offers any help on the case. But I think these comments are quite unfair because Ian and Karen Wilson made several press releases and even appeared on ITV's this morning as I've mentioned. And every few years this story is revived in the media and fresh appeals are made. In 2018 there was a documentary film made about the case called Vanished, the Surrey Schoolgirl. And this documentary made clear that Ian and Karen Wilson declined to take part in the film. And I think this documentary has convinced people that Ian and Karen Wilson have never offered any help or, or made any appeal to, to help find their missing daughter. Yes, it is true that Ian and Karen Wilson declined to take part in this documentary. They may have their own reasons, but I think it's grossly unfair to say that Ian and Karen Wilson have never offered any help to find their missing daughter. You do have to give this 2018 documentary some credit because they managed to speak with Ruth's childhood friends, and they gave some insight into Ruth as a person and the reasons they think that she may have disappeared. However, the more this documentary goes on, it does seem like her friends are wanting to say more but feel like they can't, possibly out of respect for Ruth Ruth, who knows? But you look back in hindsight, she couldn't drive. As far as I'm aware, she didn't have a passport. She didn't have a massive wage that she could have stockpiled money and disappeared on. So you have to ask yourself the question that where could she have disappeared to for 22 years? My belief is that she had planned to do something. Quite what, quite what, I don't know. But I believe that she had intended to be away from home. Um, I don't know whether that was to be permanent, temporary. Had she talked about suicide? She hadn't. Mm. Up to that, you know, she she hadn't. Mm. Up to that, you know, she she hadn't. Mm. Up to that. You know, she, you know, she. The way I see it, it would have been extremely difficult for a 16 year old to completely disappear, and I mean physically just disappear. Based on all the available information, I find it very hard to believe that Ruth would have committed suicide, unless she was clever enough to actually leave no trace of her body whatsoever. It is the overall belief of the police and Ruth's parents that she is out there somewhere still alive, and based on the comments left by her childhood friends, it does imply that she had planned something that she meant to disappear. But what is very clear is that over over 27 years later, we are still no further in solving this case. This case has always intrigued me, and it's baffling how Ruth has managed to completely disappear without a trace. If Ruth had taken her own life, then there would be some evidence left behind. I feel like it would be very difficult for someone, especially Ruth's age, 
to do that and to leave no trace of her body. So assuming that Ruth is still alive, where was her next destination from her being dropped off at Box Hill? And who did she go with, if anyone? And who might that have been? There's no evidence she ran away to live with one of her friends. And Ruth's parents and her friends were allegedly not aware of anyone that she may have gone with. And remember, this was 1995. There was no social media. There were no dating apps. And it would have been much harder for a 16-year-old at that time to have some kind of secret friendship. But definitely not impossible, of course. This case is genuinely mind-boggling. It is definitely not possible for someone to just vanish. As usual, I'm interested to read your comments on this one. And just as a reminder, I post regular videos about true crime, real mysteries, and other weird stuff. So if that does sound like your kind of thing, make sure you subscribe and become a classy creep today. I'm going to leave some resource links regarding missing persons in the description below, so feel free to check those out if you wish. I'll see you soon for another video, but in the meantime, I need to cover some more weird stuff, so I'll see ya.